two plane rides and a four-hour bus ride away from the Midlands in a remote part of northern Chile, the telescopes of the European Southern Observatory. And this is the newest, run by the University of Warwick, taking advantage of some of the clearest skies in the world. So it's 12 small telescopes, each with state-of-the-art digital cameras on the back. And, and using 12 telescopes allows us to scan a lot of sky, so we can cover a lot of the sky, making very detailed measurements of hundreds of thousands of stars. And what we're actually looking for is it's a very slight dimming of one of those stars when one of its planets passes in front of it. In this animation, you can see the tiny dip on the graph as the planet moves in front of the star. It's this dip in brightness that they're looking for. So these cameras lock onto a patch of sky as it comes over the horizon at night and they slowly track it right across to an accuracy of a 20th of a pixel. And here's the whole thing in action. It's going to study the sky, finding potential planets, and then another telescope will zero in on that location and take a really good look. Everything is controlled from Warwick, 7,000 miles away. Look, we can turn the lights on. But in these early days, that can be a bit of a headache. Yeah, so for the first few months, we're going to be looking after it and babysitting it quite intensively. Uh, we don't trust it on its own just yet. Um, but within a few months, we hope to be able to just switch it into fully robotic mode and just let it do its stuff and it will open up when it gets dark and close if it rains and open up again and carry on on its own. The aim isn't just to find new planets, the hope is to learn much more about them. Because as the planet orbits the star, it tugs on it by its gravity. And by detecting that wobble of the star, we can tell how much the planet weighs. Um, then we get its density, and the density tells us really what it's made of, whether it's rocky or gaseous. And eventually we could even tell what sort of atmosphere these planets have, perhaps even find evidence for alien life. David Gregory Kumar, BBC Minutes Today at the University of Warwick.